Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're diving into the fascinating world of triops, also known as tadpole shrimp. These little crustaceans are like living fossils. We're going to cover everything you need to know to hatch triop eggs and raise these prehistoric creatures right at home. For this hatch, I'm using these eggs from Greenwater Farms. Okay, so the first step is to fill your container with water. I know that many people use distilled water or spring water, but personally, I haven't had much luck with distilled. I do see much better results and much better hatch rates with spring water. But what I found to be the most effective is actually using water from one of my already cycled aquariums. This gives me the highest hatch rate, possibly because of the stable water conditions and beneficial bacteria already present. Keeping the water temperature stable is also crucial for hatching. Ideally, you want the temperature between 72 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 22 to 28 degrees Celsius, depending on the species. For this hatch, I'm hatching Triops longicudatus eggs, and I'm keeping it on the warmer side around 78 degrees Fahrenheit. I've tried using only a light source to heat the water, and it does work, but I've personally found a much higher hatch rate when I use a heater to keep things consistent. If you do have a small heater, it's worth using it to avoid temperature swings especially if the room temperature fluctuates. Okay, so I've been experimenting for months and months and months on different setups and the best way to hatch triops. And I think so far, this has been the most successful. So I'll run you through it very quickly. I have a main aquarium. This is a five gallon with a heater in it. And then I have three separate tubs. I'm also still testing out substrate versus no substrate. Although it seems that the hatch rate so far is pretty even. So substrate, plant, airline tubing with just barely bubbling for the first couple of days and then I turn it up. And so the water stays the temperature that I set the heater at. Currently it's sitting at 26 degrees because these are triops longicudatus, longicudatus. If this was cancriformis, I would keep it lower, maybe around 23, 24 instead. But so far, this is my favorite method. I do still have the light on it, but I don't keep it on 24 seven like I was before. This is only on for 12 hours a day and then I turn it back off. So far, I think this has been the most successful method. Once they hatch, the triop babies or larvae are super tiny, almost microscopic. You'll see tiny dots moving around within a few days. At this stage, you don't need to feed them yet. They'll find micro particles in the water and that's what they'll eat. After a few days when they're big enough to see easily, it's time for their first meal. Start with a tiny pinch of triop food or even crushed fish food. They are omnivores, so they'll also scavenge any little bits in the water. Overfeeding can cause problems, so a little goes a long way. Also, this is what I've been feeding them. I've tried a lot of different things with triops over the years. Uh, spirulina, crushed up fish food, and nothing seems to work as well as this. So this is the food I'm using, very small amounts, it's already powdered, so you don't need to crush it up, and yeah, happy with the results so far. Okay, we are only at day three, and look at the size of these triops, they are growing super fast. And look how many there are. I think this method has been the most successful for sure. There's a bunch in here as well, but they're not growing as fast as the ones with substrate. I wonder why. I wonder if there's just more beneficial bacteria on the substrate and maybe that's providing more food for the triops. Um, because there is, like, look at that. There is a significant difference between these guys and these guys and these guys, if we can find one in here. They're probably hiding in the substrate. But the point is, the only difference between this setup and this setup is the substrate because they're at the exact same water temperature. Bubblers are the same. They have the same plant in there. And yeah, as I said, there's a significant difference in growth in this little hatchery versus this one. Still tons in there, but they're just not the same size. Oh man, I love triops. Also, keep an eye on water quality since triops are sensitive to waste buildup. Every few days, I use a small pipette to remove any uneaten food or debris. Avoid full water changes at this stage since that can stress them out. Just a bit of maintenance is perfect. As they grow bigger, I start to use a turkey baster for water changes. Check out this three day old triop under a microscope. The green stuff you're seeing in the digestive tract, that's spirulina. 
Here's a quick montage of them growing. Now that they're about two weeks old, it's time to move them into their own aquarium setup. Let's quickly talk about the new aquarium I set up. So it's essentially set up the exact same as the hatching aquarium uh, without the three tubs. It does have a heater that's set to the same temperature as the hatching aquarium. It also has a bubbler that once the water level is full in the aquarium, I will, I will add a sponge filter on. The water level is lower now because it helps the triops reach the surface easier. As they grow, I will slowly add a couple of inches of water to the aquarium every couple of days. And then as the triops become adults, the aquarium will become full. Also, I'm obviously going to add plants, uh, maybe some rocks, some pieces of wood in there for them, but I am going to leave it bare bottom, both for cleaning purposes and eventually for breathing purposes. Okay, so I have moved a few over. I'm gonna wait overnight, see how they do, make sure everything's going okay. And then tomorrow I will move the rest of the triops over. Triops do grow very quickly and within a week or so, they'll be noticeably bigger and more active. They're also fascinating to watch. Fun fact, triops can be cannibalistic, so make sure they're well fed and give them plenty of space to avoid any problems. Check out this female triop, she's already holding eggs. What you're seeing here are eggs or cysts in her egg sac. If you're interested in a full video dedicated to breeding triops, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to dive deeper into their breeding process and share some tips on egg collection and care. And there you have it, hatching and raising triops is a quick, hands-on way to experience a bit of prehistoric life right at home. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more cool content on reptiles, amphibians, and even ancient creatures like these. Also, if you've raised triops before, let me know in the comments. And if you have any questions about triops, leave in the comments as well, I will get back to you. Thank you for watching and happy hatching.